everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. What's up, y'all? Hey, and today we are giving advice to board game publishers. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, I, don't, I don't know anything about publishing games. But I'm still going to call you out on some things. Actually, I do know a lot about publishing games. And now, um, what we're doing here, this is kind of a remake. We did a what top ten tips for board game publishers. Mm -hmm. we, we just decided to call it top ten things board game publishers need to stop doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, I could have made a whole list on Kickstarter alone, but I'm my list is. Kickstarter people do these things, but it's not specifically Kickstarter. This is for right. board game publishers across the board. I did not make that delineation. Well, that's fine. I mean, publishers still are Kickstarting, so I don't think it really matters. That is correct. Um, but I'm not talking specifically about Kickstarter practices. Okay. Um, however, um, all these things, I want to clarify at the beginning that we like board game publishers. We think they do a great job for the most part. And, um, mm -hmm. But that being said, I'm going to nail <laughs> I got some things I need to say. It's like, no offense, <laughs> but. <laughs> All right. All right. Bless their hearts. <laughs> let's... Uh, Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Are you ready, Freddy? Number 10. All right, so my number 10 is one that is probably the most subjective one on my list, and that is stop publishing games with mediocre and below artwork. Now, I know artwork is like, depending upon the person, right? No. Beauty is, is in the eye of the beholder. There is objectively bad artwork. But there is some bad artwork. It should never find its way onto anything that anybody is paying any amount of money for at all and yet you'll use it for a game because, oh, it's just a game. Or this is not really a theme anyway, it's an abstract game, so I'm just gonna put whatever on there. Stop it, don't do that. Um, there is a value to aesthetics in gaming. And own, even if your artwork is just aesthetics, it really doesn't even have any connect to mechanisms or anything like that, it can greatly change how I feel about a game, and I think there are a lot of other people out there who feel the same way. So stop putting mediocre artwork in your games. You're not helping yourself at all. Here, here. <laughs> There's probably not gonna be a ton of arguing on this list because <laughs> some of these things we feel very <laughs> the same on. Okay, my number 10 is, is maybe my silliest one of, of the 10, but I'm gonna keep saying this, the publishers stop doing it, and that is stop making paper money. I'm serious. I'm serious. Stop it. I've okay? almost given up on that. Yeah, I understand that. But look, okay, there are so many things you can do. You can have a money score track on the board. You can have cardboard money. You can have money tokens. And every time I say this, some people say, but I like to feel paper money. But have you seen a game with paper money? It after, looks like trash. After it's been used, yeah. It, the paper money's all crumbled. It yeah. looks nasty. It's hard to hand out. You, people are licking their fingers, grabbing yeah. it, and handing it out. I mean, it's like getting stuck on a board. It, <laughs> I hate it. The only exception that I like is uh, Millennium Blades oh. because it's like wrapped paper money, like stacks of money. And you use so like whole around, stacks. You're throwing around a stack. Oh, that is cool. Right, right. Stacks right. of cash. It's cool, except you didn't have to put it together. You had to wrap a sticker around each one of those. I know. <laughs> I know. You had to build them, right? <laughs> but still, other than that, and I, I say this and it's like, well, things are changing. And I'd say about 80% <laughs> of games with money, more than that probably, don't use paper money. But I still open a game, sometimes like a game that's fabulous in every other way, and there's a pile of paper money. Stop it. All right. My number 10 is companies that continue to number their games. They put out series of games <laughs> and they feel the need to number them. It's like, oh, this is number two in the line. This is number three. And, and that's great, except one, two, and three were fantastic. And then four sucked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. And I think then, it's nice that you think it took till four. <laughs> well, you know, and then like, so you have like this blight in the middle of your line and if it wasn't numbered, you could probably like discount that one, blow it out, move on. No one would even think about that game again, except you numbered it. You, you, you are reminding people that four was bad just by the simple nature that now it's part of a series. And I think it does you more disservice than good in the long run. 
I know that the idea is that, you know, people want to have the whole series. Some are going to sell others. But it, there's also that idea of picking up the game and looking at it and going, oh, it's number seven in some series? I don't know if I can go back and pick them all up, so I'm going to pass on this. And I think it's going to do you some harm in the long run anyway. Most companies that have done this have decided to stop doing it, you know? So I So don't think, start. Yeah. I think you might want to learn from those companies and just not start at all, yeah. So my number 10 is stop numbering your games, putting them in a, in a series when you're just making that up. It wouldn't be so bad if it was like the last one mm -hmm. in the series and the last one just happened to be not as good as the others. Then you could yeah. just have one, two, three, four, five. Weren't there six? No, not really. <laughs> Number you six know? never existed. And, you know, you could just have not 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 pick up the six one, right? Yeah, but, but if it keep going, if, if they it's keep right going, smack it's like, in the oh. middle of it, it's like. What happened to number six? We don't talk about that one. We won't talk about now, that. I will say, I think that it's fine to have a series of games and to yeah. make them all look the same. So on their shelf, they look pretty. Just and I know you want to out. number them because people are feel like they have to own them all. So uh -huh. you're like, oh, we'll sell them more. But it never yeah. works that way. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, the big companies that do this, Alea stopped doing it. Yellow stopped doing it. Because after a while, it was like, yeah, this is getting kind of silly. Yeah. Number nine. All right, my number nine, stop hiding your game. And by this I mean, when I go to the store and I pick up your game and look at the box, I need to know what that game is. I cannot believe the amount of publishers who do not put a picture of the game on the back of the box. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Like there's just a wall of text there. I'm like, well, what's in yeah, this box? Yeah, yeah. I shake it, I hope it's good. <laughs> I don't know what's in there. On the it. front, it either shows you know, some weird picture has usually nothing to do with the game. Mm -hmm. They used to show two kids in the back of the box, like throwing a dice. Like, I know, they're having <laughs> fun, and you're like, I want to be them. OK, and that's cheesy, right? What? But show a picture of, show some of the cards, show some pieces, show me something. Because my opinion is, if you don't show me part of the game, you're ashamed of it. I really feel that way. It's like, uh, but what it actually means is they made the box before they were done with the game. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't have time to put a picture in the back. You can do it. You can put a mock-up. You can do something. You can have artwork from in your game. Or they know the, me the artwork is mediocre. Yeah, there's that too. Again, you're ashamed. And if you're ashamed yep. of your game at all, don't I publish buy it? it. Anyway, stop hiding your game. All right, my number nine is massive Pointlessly, I should say, massive games. Games that come full of air. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you were going to get on the... The yeah. miniature kick here. We're ready to about, flip a tape. I, I was miniature about kick? Like yours had too many yeah, pieces. Big games. No, right. no, no, no. G great games filter the brim with stuff for great. And then little games filled are also great. Right. It's just big box when you open it up and then you <laughs> punch everything and you realize the only reason the box is that size is because of the rule book. And that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating at Scrabble. And you know it, too. You could have made that box a third the size. Machiko! Now, I know. I get the whole, oh, it's shelf presses. I get, I get that. That carries you so far, you know. And, and yeah, I, I get, you know, that chip bags, uh, chip chips, come like two-thirds filled. I get all that. But they don't come one-eighth filled, <laughs> you know. That's what you're doing. I mean, I can package your components for your Carcassonne or bigger box in a deck of cards. Like, you know, the decks of cards they sell. That's, come on, that's cheating. Or one Ziploc bag. Now you yeah, know this that's, is true. That's too much, When yeah. the expansion comes out and you can fit the base game and the expansion in the box. Easily, Or the right. next two expansions. Yeah, right, What's right. Your so yeah, you, again. I, I, again, I understand giving, giving a little bit for the idea of shelf uh, presence, I get that, but Sometimes it's overdone, you know, that they, they take advantage of that and they push that price line and they, you know, they're selling you really a box that's full of air. So just empty, massive boxes that are really just empty, not okay. That's my number nine. My number nine is big boxes for small games. Blam. What? Big boxes for small games. It is a lie. Basically, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, well, I'm just not a lot trying of the things to, of my list. I'm not trying to mince words here. It's just, 
you are literally lying to the customer on how big your game is. Mm. When you punch everything out, and we've done this before, where we've punched everything out and then we put everything back in the box, the box is this big and the components take up this much space. That's a lie. Stop doing that. Stop making your game look bigger than it is by box presence alone. But we also have to store the box. Yeah, that's it. That's the thing. Unless you want to buy some of those other things that have been coming out on Kickstarter here recently, which basically takes the face off of the game. Mm -hmm. And I understand that they're, for storage solutions, they're good, but you lose the... Well, they shouldn't be necessary. Right. It they shouldn't that be you necessary. even have to think about right. that. Right, yeah, exactly. So stop putting small games in big boxes. It's aggravating. <laughs> Number eight. All right, my number eight is narrative or funny rule books. I understand you being cute in your game, and I get all that, and you can even give me a little story in there if you want to. Just don't mix it in with the rules, because I need to reference those. You know, if I need to look up a rule quickly, I'm in the middle of gameplay. And then I have to read through your little story and you're trying to be clever. It, that's clever the first time. When I have to look up a rule for the third time, I hate you now. <laughs> you know. He's gotten a hate already. Well, that so, escalated quickly. I Just give me the rule books. Even do the Alea thing. You know, we were just talking about them and numbering their games. One thing they've always done, which was very smart, is they'd have the rules and then on the side, condensed quick points that you can reference after you've read the rules. Hey, how many cards does everybody get? Boom, it's right there on the side panel. You know, mm -hmm. go with that. If you wanna be cute, you wanna be funny, you wanna be narrative, do that in the main body and then give me what I need to look for when I'm trying to find something. But I hate that style of writing in a rule book. It's such, a, it's such an 80s thing too, when games were trying to be funny. It, it reminds me of the old like, Cosmic Encounter from 91 game rules, you know? I don't know if you ever read the uh, the Mayfair rules for Cosmic. Nope. They're full of puns. They're puntastic. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but how many cards do I draw? <laughs> <laughs> He's been holding this raging for a while. So, uh, here, here's the thing, I actually disagree with you slightly. I think you're not a big fan of CG games in general, but their rule books are funny and well-written. Okay. And that's, that's where I think I'm it's okay to do what you're saying if it's done well. Right. Even inside the rules, they can do it in such a way where it isn't aggravating, where the information is still there, but it has to be done well, and the problem is that most of them probably aren't done well. Right, right. They're doing it because they saw somebody else do it. Oh, that's a good idea, let's do it at our game just figure too. it's funny, you know? Yeah, and so doing it just because, you know, you, th you thought it was cool in another game, doesn't mean it actually fits in your game. Well, again, you also humor is a real hit and miss. It if is you're not hard. funny. Yeah. Um, but like CG, there was like an adrenaline that said, now when you're picking a gun, you should consider this, and then there's like a big blurb of says, just pick one. I like that. <laughs> That's funny to me. And it actually was like, yes, just pick one. Yeah. Don't worry too much about it first game. Okay. But they're the exception rather than the rule. Right. What do you got? All right, my number eight. Um, and, and this has been done recently of, of like, one of the games that I really enjoy actually did this, uh, V Commandos, where they came out with a base game and two expansions right off the bat. Why? Why didn't you just put all of that into the, the base game? The, my, my number eight is stop making expansions that should have been in the base game. Another game that I'm thinking about, I can't remember the name right off the bat, it was the Zombies one, where we're uh, attacking the the zombies are attacking this castle. It was that Dark Age Z or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And an expansion so changed everything. Yes! I mean, the expansion actually made the game light years better. Mm. Why wasn't that expansion in the game to begin with? It doesn't make any sense to me. So s stop making expansions that should have been in the base game. I'm not saying stop making expansions because sometimes the base game is good enough on its own and it doesn't need an expansion. The expansion right. doesn't improve the game. It improves your experience with the game, right? Gives you more to do or whatever. 
that's good, that's great. But don't give me a game that, an expansion that kind of fixes the game. Make the game the way it should be made the first time through. That's what I'm saying. So stop making expansions that should be in the base game. My number eight is stop putting expansions in the base game. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that really? <laughs> the exact opposite of what I just said. Well, what I mean by this, actually, I don't mind that you put them in there. Ah. <laughs> okay. But, but what I mean is stop putting like modules and expansions in the base game and then not referencing them. Okay. Well, not yeah, talking about them. Kickstarter stretch this, goals. This, is, this, is, very close, this is very close to kick, mostly Kickstarter, but yes. yes. Where I open a box, I'm like, what are these cards? They're not anywhere in the rule book. They're not explained. Oh, there's a little sheet over here. Why did you throw that in the box? There's the other extreme, though, that, that where we did this, uh, it was on a, I can't remember the name of the game, but it was a Kickstarter that actually had stuff printed on the board. And those stuff things come were exclusive Kickstarter things mm. that not everybody's going to have. So oh, some yeah. guy's going to be playing the game. What is this stuff? We never use this. Why is this here? It's because you didn't get the Kickstarter exclusives. Yeah, I really dislike this. NS Can did this with their Exodus expansion mm. where I'm going through. They're like, oh, and you that's want me to do this, 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 and this. That's and what I'm it like, was. Ooh, what, what? Oh, that's yes. it. Yes. Kickstarter only. Yes. <laughs> then don't tell me about it, all right? Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. need to know what I don't have. Right. No, but, but the worst is what you're saying, where they'll, I'll open it. It's happened to me plenty of times. I open it up, I punch these things. I'm like, these aren't referenced anywhere. <laughs> but there's no little sheet at all either. They yeah. just do not it's mention not there. it. It's not there. I have to go to the Kickstarter page. And there, it's some stretch goal. And I'm right. like, I don't Come even on. know what this yeah. is, how it works. Why is it in here? You, right. It's ridiculous. Oh, Forethought. Man. Forethought is needed. A sub point of this is, I know that when you're making the game, sometimes you have to sit there and argue over whether this rule is the rule you're going to use or not. Mm -hmm. I find it annoying when I get a game that has like 20 variants listed at the end because you couldn't decide which way you wanted the game to be played. <laughs> so you decided to put them all in the rule book and like, well, you can also do this. You can do this. Basically, just play the game however you want. <laughs> Give me the rules. That's Come on. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Number seven. My number seven is one that I don't think is going to make Tom's list, but I can see him agreeing with me here. Mm -mm. My number seven is do not name your company after your first game. <laughs> or name your game, your first after game, your, after, after your, your company. <laughs> uh, there's many reasons why you don't want to do that. For one thing, you might come out with more games, but also that one first game is your first game, and it might suck. <laughs> And, and you can't then, sweep it under the carpet. <laughs> then your company's name by association sucks. <laughs> so just don't do it. You know, it's just not a good idea. You want to have an entity that stands alone from that one game. It's just forward planning, it seems to me. You know, these guys release one game. They put everything behind this one game, name their company after it. And it's like they're not thinking two years down the road. Right. You might have another game, really? I mean, I understand all about world building, all of that, connecting your games, you know, building a brand. That's all well and good, but that could be, you know, completely different a couple of years from now for you. And then you've now gone and tied yourself to this one property, to this one game. Not a good idea, so avoid that. Name your company something completely different from the actual properties that you are putting out. So that's my number seven. <laughs> Mine's actually somewhat close to yours. I, the, the, I've done a whole, I think, a whole list of how not to name your company. <laughs> There's a make sure you spell it not weird, oh, yeah, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Anyway, but mine is stop using, what was my word that I used here? Obtuse terminology. Ooh. Okay. You had now, to look that up, didn't you? <laughs> in the in the game itself, okay, like the biggest culprit of this is Netrunner. Yes. Where they call everything weird names. Yes. Yeah. But I'm gonna expand this because not too many games do this, but it happens occasionally. You open up a game and I'm like, oh, they're talking about the barracks and the void and the flubaka, and I don't know what any the of that flubaka is. is. The, the, the flubaka is the flubaka. The is just the discard pile. It's a disease that, that only, they call them the flubaka. That only Wookies. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm also talking about the naming of your games. Don't be obtuse with the naming. So when I hear the name of the game, I think it's something different than it is. Now that's kind of a wide swath, but I'm specifically now talking about not every one of your games needs to be called the same thing, especially when they're different games. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about 
castles of Mad King Ludwig versus palaces of Mad King Ludwig, or villages of Valeria and quests of Valeria, mm -hmm. or tiny epic whatever. You know, <laughs> these these things make them sound like they're the same. Right, right. And that is extremely confusing. I can't, we have a, you can't see it, but we have a huge wall of games. And so many times we have to pull it. Is this an expansion? <laughs> or is this the, or is this a new game? We don't even know. Right. The box is confusing. You don't have to name every, I know, again, Z mentioned branding. But I think in this case, sometimes branding hurts you. Do you remember that uh, Escape? Um, yeah. Uh, what was the game called? Um, the little, uh, you know, it's, it's called uh, Level 7 Escape. Level 7 Escape, right? And then there was Level 7 Omega Protocol. Yeah, we and like, I didn't want to play Level 7 Omega yeah, Protocol because right. I thought it was an expansion. Yep. <laughs> That's right. Yep, yep, you could have yep. called the first one Level 7 Escape. And then the next one should have been called Omega Protocol. And then you could put a Level 7 game down there in the corner or right, whatever. Right. But, ah, oh, stop this. It's driving me nuts. And this is something that is not going away. This is something that I'm consistently seeing companies do. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> All right, my number seven. Uh, stop making rule books that, before the game is released, needs errata. <laughs> well, maybe they you can fix it. You mean right in the rule book? Oh, well, no, it's like the, the game is released on May 1st, uh -huh. May 2nd. The publisher releases a compendium of errata. <laughs> yeah. That's come yeah. on, put put some more editing work into your rule books. Make sure that it's clear how we're supposed to play the game. Stop assuming that we understand what you were trying to say. Be a little bit more verbose if you need to. Stop trying to make your rule books so short. Yeah, it's true. That you left half the game out. Uh, yeah, that's a that's definitely a, an epidemic. It seems people wanting the rules to be shorter right. for the at the expense of clarity. Right. This just happened to me 20 minutes ago. I pulled the game out, started reading the rules, and I'm I'm at the end and I'm going, yeah, I don't know how to read. I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> Clearly, someone who knows how to play this game wrote these rules. Right. I had to go to the computer. I found a video of people playing, and immediately I'm going. Oh, those things connect. I can <laughs> connect them like that bad, right? Yeah. I mean, that was not apparent from your rules. Really? It's like integral to the gameplay. Right. Someone yeah. who knows the game wrote the rules. Exactly. He's holding back a lot of anger today. I know. Oh, <laughs> baby. I mean, he's like, there's, there will be table flippery. You didn't take your medication this morning, did you? It's going to get crazy in here. So stop making rule books that automatically need a fact. FAQ or errata. Number six. All right, my number six is, look, I know that companies need to save money. So you want to make a game that can be published in 374 countries on mm -hmm. its mm -hmm. launching. But mm -hmm. not every game can do that. Stop with the nonsense on language independence and obtuse terminology. I mean, symbology, sorry. Symbology. symbology. This, mm -hmm. There's so many symbols, and um, I brought these because this was a really neat thing. Now, this is from Veggie Garden. Ooh, he brought a show and tell. We got I a did. show and tell? I did. Nobody I was told us about no show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, but look, Veggie Garden has these different uh, vegetables that do different things. Mm -hmm. Delicious. So they put stickers in the box for other languages mm -hmm. that you can put on the tiles mm -hmm. to show that they are. They did that instead of showing a circular curve thing and this and that, you know. And sometimes that works. But I can't tell you how many games I have where I'm like, oh, what do any of these symbols mean? Right. I'm constantly after looking it up and people are like, well, after you play the game so many times. But I'm playing lots of different games and these games are all using symbols. And sometimes these symbols mean different things in different games for the exact same symbol. And I find that frustrating. And I know companies are doing it to save money. Um, but there are some games where there's so much text you are way better off. Is that peas? That's peas. Uh, potatoes. <laughs> okay. <Are> you Cabbage. <laughs> oh my. Carrots. <laughs> so. Hey, this is like but this language. Is a, but this is a neat. You get to learn. But this I is am. a neat thing, right? That's a good thing. It's a good idea. I don't have to go to Board Game Geek and print this stuff up. They did right. it for me. Right. So I understand that, but at the same time, they didn't have to print 50 tiles. Or I get the game and there's like 200 cards, and I'm like, I'm talking to you, Conan. I'm like, oh, I don't need any of that stuff, and throw it away. Yeah. That's a lot of extra cost that I'm eating up. 
All right. <clears throat> I'd this rather is true. I'd yeah. rather even pay a little bit more for you to spend the time putting exactly what uh, that card does I want, rather than just symbols. Right. I wonder right. how much extra cost it is to make those cards. I wonder if you it's mean like, to put extra decks of cards in the game. I wonder how much that is. Though. It's got to be. It's it's not nothing. True, but if it's like, know. if it's like, two dollars spread over ten copies of the game. You know what I mean? I don't care. Stop doing it. Oh. I don't okay. care if it's. I don't care if it's. Free. I don't care if they pay you to do it. Stop doing it. Because I'm getting tired of opening up the game and sorting out which components are mine and not. I believe he just turned it up and not. Z's affected me. You're next. What's your number six? All right, my number six. <laughs> All right, my number six is somewhat personalized. I'm probably going to take some flack for this. That's okay. I don't. I don't. I don't mind. Yeah. But stop making Cthulhu expansions. <laughs> For not Cthulhu first games. of all, first of all, for games that have nothing to do with Cthulhu. But I love Cthulhu. I know. See, and you're the people that they're making it for. I want Cthulhu and everything because Cthulhu is Cthulhu. It does not like me. It, it does, does a little bit, a little bit. But you get what I'm saying. If the game doesn't have anything to do with Cthulhu, leave Cthulhu alone Aww. and don't put him in there. Aww. Just make your game. You don't have pandemic? to follow the Cthulhu hype that everybody else is following on. Just because it's now public domain, it doesn't mean that you now need part of it in your game. You don't. I have a question with my tentacle. <laughs> on, <t> on top <laughs> of that, we could probably ease back on the Cthulhu game making at this point. Because it's it's coming at the point of like zombies and Mediterranean trading games mm -hmm. and all of these other games, these busted, burnt out, not busted. They're good. They're they're good themes, but they're just getting to the point of being burnt out, where we have enough. Why are you shaking your head so? I'm, I'm happy with what you're saying, so. but I love Cthulhu. <laughs> Actually, I would go farther than you. I didn't think about this one, but stop taking public domain things as soon as they become public yeah. domain. I mean, we on our shelves right now, I think we have five Sherlock Holmes games. Yes, five. As soon Four as that five. hit, it was like, oh, really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Got it! <laughs> yeah, anything even remotely uh, mystery solving or suspense, it's like, slap Sherlock on there. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's no new public domain stuff coming out this year, but the next time it comes out, it's going to be like, oh, here we go. All uh, right, you know? yeah, exactly. Oh, so, right. just ease up on the Cthulhu expansions and games. <laughs> All right, my number six is companies that call their own game amazing on their box or things like that. Ah. It really bothers me when a company <laughs> feels the need to let me know right on their box, from their own mouths, that the game's fantastic, amazing, the spectacular new game about touching tiles to the board. And it's like, come on. Wait, don't forget, it takes a minute to learn. One minute to learn, a lifetime to master you are the not unbelievably the, you amazing game. Of what? We're gonna blow your mind, this is so spectacular. <laughs> we say ourselves. Really? I mean, and it's just, it's not super problematic, but it just gives, it gives me a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth when you yourself need to say your game's so fantabulous. Also, you need to stop licking the box. Yeah, I do that. I do that sometimes. <laughs> what? True. I'm totally confused on bad that one. Taste oh. Oh. Sam, Sam's trying. Um, anyway, I just, I don't know. I, it's, it's an old carryover, I think, from like mass market games that do this a lot. They do. And it's not, not it's tacky. You need to stop doing it. An addendum to this, yeah. an addendum, is if you want to quote somebody, <laughs> just ask them for a quote about the game. Right, right. Stop taking some blurb out of a review that we've done and attaching it to the game. Because then it's like, maybe there was context to that quote, whatever it might be. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Even funnier than that, though, is when they do put a quote on the back of a box, yeah. and the first one's like from so-and-so from this publication. You're like, okay, cool. Second one from this other publication. Yeah, all right. And the third one's like, Earl 5277 at, like, I'm like, what? 
You ran into people to say nice <laughs> things about your game. You had to like steal some BGG comments. Come on, that's lame. That's a screen name, sir. You need to not put that on your box. Wow. To, to be fair, look, we don't care if you quote us. Just, right, yeah. But I do think it's funny when they will say, Blah blah blah, dot dot dot. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then what no was the, What was the ellipses representing? Come on. <laughs> yada yada yada. What does it mean? Yeah, anyway, that's my sake. Stop yeah, saying yeah, yeah. you're awesome. Yeah. Number five. All right, number five. My number five. Now I, I am going to jump on the uh, uh, anti Kickstarter bandwagon here for just a few moments, uh, but specifically I'm talking about Kickstarter exclusives Ooh. that then are nigh impossible to find two months after the game has been released. Uh, it's frustrating for people who were not able to get onto the Kickstarter for one reason or another. Maybe they didn't have the finances. Maybe they didn't hear about the game in time, whatever it might be. But now there is a, you know, sometimes, especially with like games like Conan, which have a whole other box of things that now people are not able to get a hold of. And so it, pre it presents a bunch of conundrums, one of which is, as a reviewer, what can I talk about and what can I not talk about? Mm -hmm. Or do I make two videos, one about just the base game and another one about the base game with all of the Kickstarter exclusives? It's... I know you're making a lot of money off of this thing called Kickstarter exclusives. I got it. I understand why you're doing it. Why don't you make them less exclusive than you are now? You'll still make the money on them. You'll, you'll actually make the money on them into the future because the people that were not able to jump on the Kickstarter will probably purchase them later on anyway. So you're, it's, it's almost like a win-win. You're elongating the money making. That's good, right? So stop it. <laughs> elongate the money making. <laughs> I want to get that on a shirt. <laughs> Yo, elongate the money making. No, I agree with Sam here. I, I don't mind Kickstarter exclusives when it's like special art or alternative right. art, or yeah. like in, the, in some cases, you get the stuff super early and for a better price. Yeah, right. Like TMNT, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle game, they had mm -hmm. all this exclusive stuff, and they're like, well, you will be able to get it later, it will just be a different mold. Like, right. so for example, they just came out April O'Neil as the expansion, mm -hmm. but you got it with the Kickstarter, but it's a different mold. All right, right. that's fine. That's some people fine. have Kickstarter, it's something different than me, but I can, it doesn't change gameplay. And it's even worse, like you were talking about that zombie game earlier, mm -hmm. that expansion was a Kickstarter expansion only. Right. And it fixed the game. Yes, exactly. Which is why no one has that game Dark these days. Dark Age Z. All right. Yeah, it's your fault. My fault? Dark Age Z. That oh. was the name of the game. I'm sorry. Oh, dang it. All right. All right. My number five is one that has been mentioned already by Mr. Vassal, huh. and that is no component picture on the back of the box. Oh, uh, good. I'm not the only one bothered by this then. <laughs> no, it's happened a few times. And again, it's like, ooh, it's a cool box. Whatever. You turn it over, no pictures at all. So it's like a big wall of paragraph of text. Mm, yeah. Highly suspicious. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see that, I'm just like, huh. <laughs> What's in here? You I know? see what you did here. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm putting that game right back on the shelf. Exactly. There's no picture on the back of the box. It's exactly what what's I did. What's in the What's in the box? <laughs> right. You know. So no, I agree with you 100. percent Yeah. No components. It's staying on the shelf. That's my number five. Correct. My number five is the same as Sam, except I think it's less subjective than he thinks, and that is stop hiring bad artists. Oh. Now look, I know artists, there's subjective art, you know, where I'll say, I don't really like the art, and Z will go, I like it. Right. But we get a lot of games where we all three look yeah. at it and go, you got your sister to do that, didn't you? You know, or you got and, your, your kid did that or, or something. We're, or we're at a game night and everybody's like, ooh. I mean, everybody's sitting around the table, it's not just us. And it's just like, why? Why do they make the game look like this? Look, right. artists get paid for a reason. Yeah. Well, they should get paid for a reason. Well, there are people out there bit, yes. who are good artists. They do a great job. There are a lot of them. Find some. Mm -hmm. All right? Just because you drew on your notebook and the teacher walked by and said, that's nice, but you're getting an F for not paying attention or whatever, you know, that doodling and the other people are like, oh, you have a gift, but then you never went to college and you never pursued it. You just have, you can, you know, sketch okay. 
you're not the right person for the game. There's an art, excuse my pun, but there's an art to it. There really is. I see what he did. Uh, I got got it. It. But there really is effort take that goes into this. It's a big deal. You need to hire a professional. I could even go farther, graphic design. Stop making graphic design. It, made, it looks like it came from the 40s. Um, or 80s, I guess the 80s. That's, what we, that's usually our negative thing. We'll get a box and go. Somebody found some old CCG cards <laughs> and they based this game on that graphic yeah. design. Right. Yeah, not good. There's no excuse for that. And it, there are a lot of games that I really like the game and the art and or graphic design puts me off from it. No yeah. excuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Correct. Yeah. Number four. All right, my number four is um, black bordered cards. Ooh. Black bordered cards needs to be a thing of the past. Now, I know that there is probably a cadre of people out there that think that black bordered cards are, or they look like they're worth more, or they look like they have more value or something. And because I used to think that way. Well, that's because of Star and, Wars. <laughs> and it's because of Star Wars CCG. The black bordered cards had more rarity to them. They were worth more money on the secondary market. I, I understand that. The problem is, is that functionality breaks down the longer you play the game. Because those black borders show their wear much more than a white border thing. Quit assuming that I'm going to sleeve my game. That's right. Because I don't sleeve my game. I don't want to spend another $40 for enough sleeves to put all of my cards in. So I'm not going to sleeve the game. Stop assuming that I am so, and keep making those black borders that are going to deteriorate over time. Make games with white borders that don't show their age as, well, as much. Yeah, what Actually, I've heard, I've, I've heard, I, this is a question I forget who I've asked, and what I've heard is that supposedly it's, it's, it's easier to print a black border than the white border. I, I, some reason of like, it, it, it hides, like the ink edge is easier to hit with a black border. Hmm. I don't know what the reasoning is. Someone who runs a printing company probably can maybe explain this, but we have had white bordered cards. It's not like we haven't ever done it and we're asking for something crazy, you know? Right. Magic the Gathering also used to do it mm -hmm. where the cards somewhere white bordered and you're right, the black bordered ones were like the expert level ones. Right. So it was, again, the same thing there, but, and, and so I can kind of understand this idea of all oh, black bordered cards are, you know, they, they will hide printing mistakes or whatever, okay. But we have had white border cards that look fine. Mm -hmm. Did we forget how to print those? What's going right. on, you know? Yeah, not sure. I think your point could have been expanded to what you said halfway through is don't assume we're going to sleeve cards. Yeah. That covers a multiple of sins. Like, oh, you gave us really thin cards, but you knew we were going to sleeve them. Or you gave us junky cards. No, look. Yeah, we don't want right. to sleeve everything. And if we do, you better be putting sleeves in that box. <laughs> right. All right. My number four... Stop being a pants on fire, sitting on a telephone wire, liar. All right? Ooh. If your game, every game has a few pieces of information on it. Liar, there's, liar, pants on fire. Oh, I know. The, okay, I, you look, I look confused right in there. On, there's three pieces of information for, on every what, box, right? Wow, he's, one is how old you have to be to play it. All right, well, that's subjective, okay? Right. Fine. The other one is... Well, that, that number is all based on, like, is, are you going to choke on it or whatever? Or, right? yeah, test that's, it, or how much testing it, they went yes, through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, then the second number is how many people can play the game? You're lying on that. Okay, Sometimes, probably. Yes. No, a lot. Sometimes. Then the third one is how long the game takes. You're definitely lying on that one. That's the fire, <laughs> liar, liar, pants on fire. Actually, part. though, that one, by, they both drive me nuts. Okay, if your game says 60 minutes, it better be at least within 90. But when it takes two and a half hours, it's like, come on, yeah. guys. But I also hate the player count. Look, I know that you want to stretch it out. But when I buy the game, and it's like, blah, 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 and at the end of the rule book, they're like, special rules for two players. And it's this convoluted way. It's not a two-player game. But you did that so you could put two to something on the box. Yeah. And then even worse, I think, is when the game clearly was maxed out at four. Right. But you <laughs> added that fifth player because, first of all, you hate humans. And secondly, because you just like to see people go longer than the time limit on the box. Again, you're lying. The fact that you said it goes to five lies about the time limit. Yeah. Oh, I hate these both. I hate them so much that I actually assume every box lies about it. I do. I'll get a box that'll say two to six. I'm like, not six, not two. It's yeah. three to five. 
Right. I just right. automatically assume that. And when it says 40 minutes, I, I add 50% time to everything. It would be better. It would be better to overestimate. God, than see, underestimate. I, I, it, it is a dangerous thing, right? Because if you make it sound like it's too long, then people are like, ah. True. But I mean, if you overestimate by, say, I don't know, 15 minutes, like whatever amount of time you think it should be, add 15 minutes to it. I just... Overestimate. Shouldn't, isn't it just very easy to say, like, you know, learning game will be this long or whatever? I mean, just... That's another line of text that might cost more at a, at a printer. I guess. <laughs> but I mean, you know, whatever. But I mean, if it's a 30 minute game, say it's a 45 minute game. Just like I know some games will do the whole like two to four, and then I, I think it's the mystery roaming games that this has said two to four, plays great with two. I'm like, okay, I know what you mean. You're saying no, it plays strong. three, it right. plays four, but listen, it's really a two player game. Right. That's fantastic. I'm yeah. okay with that. You right. want to put two to four on there and sell it to people that didn't read that? I don't care. Or if you say if three to five know, players, you know? two player variant included, fine. Right. I know it's a variant. Game. Right, right, right. There's a lot of these games out there with a two player game. You are essentially doing some weird thing just to do it two players. And then eight, eight to ninety nine years, also a lie. <laughs> I ain't playing with no ninety nine year old. <laughs> oh what? Why are you That's shaming people? That's a lie. Ain't shaming. What's wrong with you? Some hundred year old walks in like, look at the box. Get out. <laughs> Goodness gracious. All right. All right. Um, is it me or my number, number four? four? All right, my number four is creative packaging. And uh, of course, by that I mean anything that is not a square standard box, a tube, a cone, a thing, a spiral. That, <laughs> what exactly a is a thing? What does the box? thing look like? The thing, you know, you pull a tab and then it goes <laughs> And then you pull the cards out from there. Okay, stop. And then you zip down the side and the dice come uh, tumbling out. <laughs> come on, come on. I know, it, you know, the thing is, it looks good on the shelf oftentimes when they do these things. Right, because it stands out. Because it stands out. Yeah. That's cool, that's great. But then don't, I, I have to buy it and take it home and I don't want to hate you, but now I hate you. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because I have to put it back in that stupid, Cover like that plastic thing on top of the box. Oh, where they open up and you don't know how that to do it back great. in. That looks great. That looks great on the shelf. It, it, it made me want to buy the game, but then it made me not want to buy any more of your games. Or have or boxes that have like windows in them. Oh, that's not cool. Or you have to fit. Looking at you, FFG. You have to fit things specifically though, like because the inside of the box doesn't actually fit everything. They, right. you know, the display on the outside holds some things. Oh, yeah. you that's can't, right. You can't oh. chuck the, 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 you should put enough space in the box so that when I throw away that plastic outside, yeah. we're good. But no, I gotta keep that because those right. three extra bits yeah. that you couldn't put space for in the box, I gotta keep in that stupid lid part. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> anyway, that's my number four, creative packaging. <laughs> Number three. My number three has made me say probably more nasty things about publishers than anything else on my list. Because <laughs> we already talked about there needs to be a picture on the back of the box, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. But even more importantly. A picture of the game, by the way. A picture of the game. There needs to be a picture of a setup game in the rule book. Ooh. Yep. A oh, setup I want page. A setup it's page. not a hard Good thing to do. Stuff. Yes, you show yes. the whole game in all its setup glory with like numbers that show. And there are many companies that do this. And to you, I applaud you. And I get the game, and it's like, put this here. I'm like, what is that? And I look at the picture, and I'm like, uh, oh, it's that. Okay. But when there's no picture, yep. I, I I'm Good not luck. I'm not kidding here. I really do hate you. Okay. No, okay, I'm kidding, I guess. But no, that seriously. Is serious language. I, 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 I'll say so many nasty things. That I'll be is like, the truth. I, I don't know I, what the Kabuva is. What deck is that? Oh, Where is that? Those Where does it go? Man, they those Fubukis, right? The Hufukis. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. it's Flubaka. The Flubakas, the Flubakas, yeah. Flubakas and Bufufus. The Flubaka is actually no, listen, a musical instrument. There are so many times I'll have all these decks and they'll say, put this here. And I'm like, well, or you don't where know what deck is it is, that? you don't know where it goes. Right. I mean, even just saying the red whatever Like, help deck. me out. I don't or know what blue. your components are. But a picture is amazing deck. because when you're done, you look at the picture, and then you look at this. There was a game I played recently oh, yeah, where they showed so a picture good. of the game halfway through. 
That was even worse. I was like, well, this is what the game looks like halfway through the game. <laughs> but where does stuff go at the beginning? Seriously? Oh. That's, that's ridiculous. Wow. And again, I understand when you're writing these rule books, you don't have the game done. Then you need to find someone who can render what your game is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Because you need to have a picture of setup. Right. It's oh, it's, it is it is the difference between hours of time sometimes. Yeah. That's that's a good one. That's, oh. that's amazingly good. It makes me angry. Stuff. All right, what do you got? All right, my number three is reprints with a tiny extra little thing in the game. Now, I don't care if you take the game, you rework all the artwork, you want to put out a new, pretty second version a while after it's been out, by the way. Don't, don't do it two months after I bought your game, okay? But... I feel like that was pointed, but all right. <laughs> but what I hate is when I, they put out a new game and they know they do this, right? And then there's like two extra cards that were not in the original printing of the game. Just so that everybody who has the game is just a little bit tempted to get that game again. Oh, you're talking about it from that viewpoint. I see For what you're like saying. For like two new cards, you know? And come on, I hate that. Okay, it's so like, you can't just reprint the game or print it and have like half the things be new in it. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Your second version is spectacular compared to the first. No, no, no. It's basically the same thing. Except for this one little thing you can never get. Come on. <laughs> really? To clarify, you're talking about the same company printing their own game. Yes. Not like I picked yes. up this version of El Grande that's 10 years old and we add, we added a few more cards. You're talking about, hey, we made our first edition and a couple years later we come out with our second edition. That's barely different, but it's different enough. Yes. Ah. Yes. Okay. And again, I don't care if the artwork's different. You want to do another printing. You, don't, you want to change the box size. I don't care about any of that. If the content is the same, I'm happy. Or if it's radically different because it's like 2.0, cool. But not when it's the same game and you made like just the smallest of component additions, you know? And now you have this many, like, now you have an extra character that didn't come in the original game. You can't get that character. You gotta buy the whole game again if you want that character. Or there's a couple of new cards. There's this one extra thing. That really is just annoying. Yeah. Because I remember. if you're a fan of the game, you won that content but they're making you buy the whole game again yeah. for some silly amount of components, yeah. right? One of the major transgressors of this was Battlecry for me. Uh -huh. Because Battlecry, I think, was like the 150th anniversary or something know, like that. Some it sort was, of anniversary. It was anniversary. an anniversary edition of Battlecry. The outside of the box looked amazing. You open it up, same stuff. <laughs> oh, really? All they did was they put a fresh coat of paint on it. But you're tempted to get it for that new box. I was. I was tempted to get it for the new box, and I was like, oh, I was like fawning over it. I couldn't, I couldn't get a hold of it. And then I finally saw a copy of it, and I turned it over, and I was like, wait a minute. These components <laughs> look exactly the same as the first one. Now, I've never actually seen the physical components, but the picture on the back of the box looks exactly like the components from my first edition. At least there was a picture in the back of the So box. I was like, that's not It's not right. quite the exact same thing I'm saying. No, I, I understand, you, yeah, yeah. I understand. Anyway, that's my number three, reprints with a tiny extra thing included just to upset me. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's making the game, oh, that Z Garcia's gonna hate this one. <laughs> All right, my number three, <clears throat> stop including cheap cardboard inserts in your game. Mm. Cheap cardboard inserts that we're just gonna go, hmm, and that's it. Now, you will actually do that to most inserts in a game because you just, because you're a monster. But, <laughs> I don't know. But I'm talking about, like, for example, the one that immediately comes to mind is the FFG trench. Well, those are for shipment purposes, is what they say. Don't care. They hold the game together, that's the thing. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. You, it's like your red five standing by, and you open the box and there it is. <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> because it really doesn't help you. They have those, most of it is for like card games and stuff like right, that, right, right. and they have those little things that like flap up at the bottom of the trench. They don't work. They don't work at they all. They don't work at all. And so. What about when they cut a hole for the cards somewhere in the thing? So <laughs> You're supposed to <laughs> stick them down there so that when they shift just a little bit, they'll. <laughs> and they're all just nastified in there now. Nastified, yeah. yes. No, I'm sorry. There are so many different. I think. Now, I don't 
haven't done all the research here, but from what I've heard, there are a lot of companies out there that have been doing this. Days of Wonder knocks it out of the park, usually, with nice plastic inserts, and they've been doing it for years. And their games aren't off the charts expensive. You can put good inserts into your games. Stop cutting unnecessary corners. No, uh, count, cut the unnecessary corners and give me a plastic insert. Also, if you're going to put stuff underneath those inserts, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually my number 11. Mm. I was, I was going to say, because I know a lot of those uh, inserts, though, are for shipment. And they don't care if you're keeping it, right? They, they need the things to not jostle around in there while in transport. Mm -hmm. What really bothers me is that in-between step. Because you got the really nice inserts, that's cool. And then you got the garbage inserts like FFG does, where you just like pull the things down and you go, and you throw it away. That's right. okay too. It's that insert that they put just a little bit of thought into, but it's still some garbage piece of cardboard. <laughs> and it's like, it looks like you guys intended for me to keep this. Right. Because but it's, it's garbage. Got, it's got like artwork on it, and it yeah, looks like, like, oh, it looks like a basket. Look at that, it's so cool. Nope, it's gone. Worst insert is, I think, the Mayfair inserts that they did for a while, where they put the exact same insert in every game, regardless of what the game was. It was a plastic insert. <laughs> so I'd be like, well, here's something for, where are these small cards supposed to go? You mean go? when they were working with phalanx and stuff? Yeah, they were using yeah, the exact yeah, same yeah, insert yeah, in every game. You'd be game. like, this is a great shape. Nothing in this box is shaped <laughs> like that. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Those were bad. So it's Stop. that. It's that in between that's really bothersome, yeah. Right. Number two. My number two has also been mentioned already uh, by Tom, and it is expansions. This is sort of what he said, but the way I phrased it was expansions that look like new games and new games that look like expansions. You need to stop that. You got to clear that whole mess up. <laughs> it's confusing. You know? <laughs> because it's, you know, I'll look at a game and go, I don't have that. No, no, it's, just, it's a brand new game. Oh, it's not an expansion? I guess I'll try it. And then you got the other ones where it's like, oh, man, more content. I really like the original. No, no, this does not combine with that. Right. Why? Why? This is actually a bidding game set in space. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the original was in the desert. So... Yeah, that's I, again branding goes a long way, but you gotta you gotta find a different way to do that than having these products merge in people's minds, you right. know. And again, if you have a dud, you're now gonna smear the whole line with that problem, you know. Get, get some get some space between your your games. Make sure that it's clear if something's an expansion, if something is a standalone game. Uh, that's it. That's my number two. All right, what do you got? All right, my number two. I'm reminded about how much, why this is my number two at this point. He looked at us when he said that. I think I think we. No, must because have he felt this yesterday while we were open opening some new review copies that we got in. Oh. Stop making us put stickers on components. Ah! Sam stickers. I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> Stop it! I don't know what you're gonna do, but stop making me put stickers on stuff. I'm done with stickers for like three decades. No, wait, I'm. Yeah, three decades. I've been done with stickers. I don't need to put stickers on things anymore. <laughs> 50 different components that need 50 different stickers, and the stickers are that small. Stop it. I hate stickers on components. You know what makes this even worse for Sam? is the fact that I don't care about stickers that much. So I'll get them, I'll be like, all right, just put them on. And, and, and they're like stand. hanging off the edge. And I'm like, oh my goodness, no. So, yeah. <laughs> well, whenever you open, it happens to me, whenever I open up something and it has stickers, I'm like, oh no, the gauntlet <laughs> has been thrown down. Yes. You get one shot at getting it right. Right. right? It's not like you shuffle cards and I like fumble one. I'm like, all right, it just goes back in the deck. <laughs> right. No, no, you get one shot at getting these stickers on right. Are you ready? You like put it off. I'm like, I'll and come back to this when I've had my morning coffee. <laughs> you know, it's like you feel like the pressure is on and then you get the, you got to get like the tip of a knife if they're real exact, you know, and, and you're like, and, yeah. no. Yeah. Oh, it's too late to pull it off. It's a dilemma. You know, it's like, oh, no. It's yeah, the worst. because some of them are made to where if you pull them off, it's it like creases the picture, and you can't just stick it back. Just stop. Okay, but if you do make stickers, make them give us a lot of room 
to put them on the discs or things when they go right to the edge or in some idiotic companies' cases over the edge. Yes. And then, especially then you have to turn them upside down and mix them around. Uh, ah, ha, 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 ha. This is true. All right. My number two. Very true. Has been kind of mentioned by both these guys, but mine's going to be very wide open, and that's get your box size right. All right, so I have some things on here. Not too weird. Use a debt. Yes. All right, stop making these really a hexagon. Really neat idea. Don't do it. All right? <laughs> you know, stop making these really weird sizes. Um, then standardize them. Look, you're a publisher. You're working with these manufacturers who make games for all the other companies. You don't need to make yours one or two millimeters bigger than everyone else's square box. Nope. That is insane. Come on now. <laughs> don't even tell me. And especially, you know, it, again, that whole thing with the rule book, I, I, I almost put that on my list. Your rule book does not need to be the same size as your box. Like if your <laughs> box is a big square box, no one made you put a square rule book in there. You can make a normal size rule book. I, don't, I should have to be like, what did the rules say? Jamaica. Oh, that's another oh, good one too. Jamaica. Like, oh, come on. Rules, yeah. rules Great are Great idea. Horrible oh, implementation. Horror, let me look at the rule. But anyway. That's the worst. Okay. Yeah. But then the other thing was what Sam said. Um, where boxes, there's just too much air in them. Although, I hate the other extreme too, where I feel like I need a jackhammer or I'm playing Tetris to be able to get that box <laughs> closed. You like put all the pieces in and you put... <laughs> How did these get in there again? Okay, this one goes in first. This one needs to go sideways underneath it because some of these boxes come packaged where it's all shrink wrapped and it's like an inch off. Right, yeah. You knew ahead of time, that's garbage. <laughs> I don't like boxes with too much air, but I don't like boxes with too little air either. Right, 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 right. Or when you make an expansion, and you already had this expansion design when you made the base game, and your expansion fits in a box except for three pieces. Oh, we hate you. <laughs> a lot of hate going on in this video. <laughs> Stop making weird boxes. And finally, number one. All right, we gotta be careful these don't go off the table now. <laughs> it's gonna be loud. Seven. 12. If you get 19, you're the best. Four. I'm not the best. Four also, that works. Okay, we'll just, uh, I think I'm gonna go first, then I'll have you go second, and I'll leave Tom for the last spot. He seems to be the most charged. He's ramping up. Yeah, no, you are, okay, but yes. We'll leave him for last, all right? Up. Well, my number one has already been said, sort of, he just stole my thunder just right now a little bit. And that is, number one is components that do not fit back in the box. Ah. And again, this comes from quite simply the, uh, the fact that when I open your game, all the components are in these nice long sheets. And then they get punched from there. And technically they're not occupying more volume, but they go in a baggie. And in there, they don't really lay nice and flat again. Yeah. And then I put them back in the box and I couldn't get the lid back on. Sometimes you gotta build some of them too. Like you have you to build, build them that's too. really annoying. If you gotta build stuff and they're like, yeah, you gotta take it apart every time. Oh no. <laughs> Bye. Nope. Not keeping your game. Nope. That's Remember that game you built all those castles? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> anyway, come on. It's it's if if having a lot of room, like you said, is is bad, then not being able to put your game back in your boxes is worse. I literally can't fit the pieces you gave me back in the box you gave me. I mean, wh Again, a good insert solves all these problems. It does, it does. But sometimes they just cut it so close True. or you know, you got the whole like tiny epic game sometimes trying to push being edgy and being tiny and being pocket sized. You're like, look, your game wasn't really meant to be a pocket sized game. Not those games, I mean any game, you know that they're going for that whole, you can take it with you, kind of. <laughs> you can take most games. of it with you. You can take it with you. If you have a huge. slightly <laughs> larger backpack than normal, you can take you know, it with you. You can take most of the components with you. <laughs> you have yeah, to carry this. I really don't like that they don't, it doesn't seem to register that like when they're packaged in there in the punch board, everything's nice and flat. I mean, I'm gonna need more room than, than that space, you know? Anyway, that's my number. One, components that do not fit back in the box. Hmm. I'm trying to think, what's Sam's number one? It's gotta be something about components. Stickers again? <laughs> stickers. I mean it! Stop my putting number stickers! Number one and number two. All right, what's your number one? No, my number one is, is um, and, and really publishers need to stop doing this. And uh, you, you know you're doing it because I assume that you are good at what you do. 
you're good at making games. So stop making bad games because you know you're making a bad game when you publish it. You can, I know you have a brain and I know you can look at other games and say, you know what, this game is not as good as that game and it's going to fit in the same demographic or it's gonna fit in the same genre of games. It uses the same mechanics and this one just isn't as good as that one then don't publish it. I know that some people are gonna like it. I know that some people, because a, a thousand people kickstarted it, they'll like it. Or maybe they will, just based upon what... <sighs> but if you know that this is not a good game, it's subpar even by your standards, don't just pump it out. Put some more time into making it good. Or if you can't make it good, Throw it out and start on something else. Stop making bad games, people. And people who are backing, people who are backing bad games on Kickstarter, stop it. This is, I know this is mainly meant for publishers. This is so beast, man. <laughs> Shut up, Zane. <laughs> Just stop, stop backing bad, ga good, bad games because it's got, wow, look at those minis. Ooh, wow. But the gameplay is, meh. Stop. Please. That's my number one. Stop oh. making bad games. Well, thanks, Sam. My number one was stop making mediocre games. But I guess Sam's is... No, no. <laughs> Sam said bad games, though. That's right. No, but I, I've been the same. I, I Look, I've had publishers tell me before, words kept to protect the guilty, Say, yeah, that game wasn't that great, but we needed a game to publish. No, you didn't. No, yeah. Okay? Right. We live in an era now where we are publishing thousands and thousands of games a year. Mm -hmm. We see all of them. And I'm telling you, when we see, we'll see games that come in, they come in, we look at it and go, eh. And the publisher knows that, too. They don't think this is the best game ever. And I hate when they even try to pretend it's the best game ever, because I know you're lying. You know you're lying. <laughs> you know, it's kind of this silly game. This is, a, do you know what this game does? There's drafting involved. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what else? Oh, it's also, it's about Vikings and zombies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> is it better than this game? Well, no. Then why did you make it? Right. Don't make these, uh, publishers are basically, they're like desperate to publish something. Yeah. We gotta find a game. Your game, yeah, it's pretty good, let's publish it. No, stop publishing pretty good games. Yeah. I wouldn't even be upset if publishers were publishing Good games, although I think you should strive even beyond that and look for great games. But there's a lot of publishers who make just mediocre games. It's like, that game was just okay at best. Why did you publish it? It's out of print in a year. You've wasted a lot of time and stuff on that. Days of Wonder does it right. They really do. Well, I was just going to say. I they swing gonna, for the fences. I wasn't going to name any names, but since you went ahead and said Days of Wonder, I think Portal recently is really uh, doing the right thing here with with uh, First Martians. Right. That's been that that was supposed to be released what a year ago, right? Or at least six months ago. And, Something like that. And yeah. Ignacy made the decision. No, we're not gonna we're not gonna print this because it's not ready. He knew it was a bad game. It wasn't. It wasn't by good his enough. standards. Right. It wasn't good enough. I'm gonna wait until it's good enough. Yeah, I mean, all these like it's a bad game, it's a good game. We we know that that's highly subjective, right? It, and and we but but we really do mean by your standards, you yourself, because I know, like you said, that some publishers are by their very own standards thinking that this isn't so good, right? But I'm gonna drum it up. It's gotta go out. I need another game. I need possibly hype. another hit. And we're also not saying that Days of Wonder or Portal put out a game and every game is a hit. Right. They've both had duds. Yes. For sure. But they put time and effort and, and they, they really believe in their games. Whether they bomb or not, they do. They, they took care with those products before they hit the market. And a lot of companies, it is apparent it doesn't, that doesn't seem whether like the game is good or not, that care didn't go into the product, right? Uh, attention. That's the difference. Well, I'm sure some of you will disagree with us on this list, or maybe there's things we didn't mention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was not a hard list for me to make. I probably have a hundred things. <laughs>
and you guys said things I was like, yep, that's another great thing, you know? And we yeah. could talk, we could do a top 10 list on just rule books, a top 10 list on just boxes, a top 10 list on just components, on cards. There's so many things, but we don't have time. Tell us what you think things publishers need to stop doing in the comments. Hey, we're glad you watched this video all the way to the end. Yeah. So now you can see the top 10 list instead of typing them in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, I'll put it up right here. It'll be right here. All right, anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Z Garcia, thanks everybody. Sam Healy, see you on the flip side, folks.